math humans, we're going to do D3 today. We're going to be um, managing the characteristics of the cube function. Specifically, we're going to look at domain and range, and then the x and y intercepts, and then we're going to graph. <clears throat> All right, so let's write the cube function. It's going to be y is equal to the cube root of x. If we write this as a ra rational exponent, it's going to be x to the one-third. Okay. <clears throat> it is a pretty cool looking graph, so I'm going to put it in my grapher so we can see that. So I'm going to do x raised to the one-third and do a zoom six. And so here comes our cool little graph. Okay. <clears throat> That's kind of cool looking, right? Easy to enter into our grapher. So if I sketch the graph of what we just saw on our calculator, it kind of looks like this. Okay. All righty. So since this is an odd root, <clears throat> we can take the cube of a negative, which is why this part of the graph is here. So the graph has nowhere that it's undefined. Okay. So for the domain, it's going to be a negative infinity to a positive infinity, or we could write the weird R all real numbers. Nothing is undefined, so that means that all real numbers are our domain. The range, remember we read range from the bottom. The bottom is also going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. It just gets there slowly. <clears throat> My x-intercept, remember this particular worksheet, set of worksheets calls it the horizontal intercept, is going to be 0, 0. And the y-intercept, which is the vertical intercept, is also going to be 0, 0. Okay, so let's do our first example. We have a nice short video today. Woohoo! We like short videos. <clears throat> so it says for the first example, use your grapher oops, to complete the table. And again, I'll show you tricks on how to do this effectively <clears throat> and sketch. And any time you have to sketch, that means, of course, that you have to label the graph. Alrighty, so the function that we're going to be given, let me scoot my paper up a little bit, our f of x is going to equal the cube root of x plus 3. Okay, and I'm going to write this right off the bat as x plus 3 raised to the one third power. <clears throat> the table that they're going to give us. Remember, I tend to do my table sideways. It doesn't matter. You can go up and down or sideways. I want to fill in a negative 5, a 0, and a 5. So let's get out our handy-dandy graphers. I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to enter the equation <clears throat> x plus 8 raised to the 1 divided by 3. And then just to look at the graph, here's my graph. Okay. Alrighty, we can find this point right here a variety of different ways. So one way that you could find that point, it is a negative 8, but one way that you can find it is to second calculate, and I want a 0 because that's the x-intercept. I have to go to the left of the point, so I'm going to go to the left just a little bit, and I'm going to hit Enter. And then notice that it's asking me for the right, so I'm going to cross the axis and go just to the right, enter, enter, and that is a negative 8 right there. So <clears throat> sometimes it's nice to confirm on your calculator and not just assume that it's a negative 8. Okay? So I'm going to write that my x-intercept is a negative 8, 0. For the y-intercept, I'm going to use my calculator again, and I'm going to do second calculate and value. And that's going to, the y-intercept is when x is 0, so I'm going to put in a 0 for the x, and then I'm going to get that y is equal to 2. So my y-intercept is going to be 0, 2. I'm going to go ahead and sketch my graph <clears throat> because I can, since it's right there looking at me. Okay. So there's my arrows. There's an arrow on that one. This is a negative 8, and this point right here is 2. And then that is sufficiently labeled. 
So now I'm going to use my calculator to help me fill in the table. I could do the math by hand, or I can use my grapher. So I'm going to go to my table, and I'm going to tell it to be in ask mode for the independent variable. <clears throat> so then when I go to the table, okay, I'm just going to put in a new value. You can't delete these. You just have to write over it. So I'm going to put in a negative 5, and I get 1.4422. So I'm going to write 1.44. Then I'm going to put in the 0. We already know that it's 2. Okay, and then I'm going to put in a 5, <clears throat> and I get that it is 2.35. Okay, 2.35. All right, so that is kind of how we use our grapher nice and efficiently. We've already sketched the graph and labeled it, and I've already listed my X and Y intercepts. Okay? <clears throat> All right, let's move on and do our second example. We only have two today. Woohoo! Nice and short. So for example number two, it says for the given function, determine the domain, the x and y intercepts, and then graph. And remember, anytime you're told to graph, that means that you also have to label the function, okay? Because a graph without labels is just a pretty picture. Our function is going to be the fifth root of 8x minus 32. And so before I put this in my calculator, I'm going to rewrite it as 8x minus 32 raised to the one-fifth. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go to my y equals, clear what's there, and I do 8x minus 32 raise it to the one-fifth. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do a zoom 6 right now and start with the graph. So the cool thing is it looks very, very similar to the cube root. A difference might be that it's a little bit more vertical in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph, okay, because it's here. So it appears, one, two, three, four, that the x-intercept is at four. So here's my graph. But instead of assuming, I'm actually going to find that. So second calculate, we're looking for a zero or an x-intercept. And make it close on the left. And then I'm going to get <clears throat> close on the right. Enter, enter. And it tells me that it is indeed 4. Okay? All righty. So the first thing that they asked us to do was find my x-intercept. So I'm going to write that my x-intercept is for zero. Now I need to find the y-intercept. And again, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to do second calculate value. The value is when x is zero, and I get that y is a negative two. So my y-intercept is going to be zero, negative two. The domain, again, nothing is undefined. And I can take the fifth root of a negative if this happened to be negative because five negatives is still negative. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. You can either write the negative infinity to positive infinity or you can write the funny looking R. Either is appropriate. Alrighty. And that is it for today. Really nice and handy. You need to make sure that you're bringing your calculator to class so as we work through problems, you can ask questions with your grapher if you need to. Alrighty, I will see you soon.